Yeah, everybody, I wanted to show you the naturalization of tulips that I've been doing here in uh, one of the, in several of the beds I've got here. Here, these tulips have been here for, oh gosh, about eight years or nine years. And so they get the morning sun, as you can see. Okay, so that's the morning sun. Then you come round the corner into the yard here. Hey, kitty. And here are the same kind of tulip. This is King's Blood. You can see one is about to come forth right there. Um, but all the other ones are still green. So they come late, but they're in the shade of, they can't get the afternoon sun. So they're taking longer. Um, those have been here for about 10 or 12 years. Then here's some more that were planted. Oh, these could be 14 or 15 years ago, and they're still blooming. So what I do is, if I have tulips in pots, like here, you see all these tulips are in pots. If I have them in pots, like this, when they die back, when the tulips are over, the flowers are over, I feed the leaves, let them die back naturally, and then I transplant them out to where I want them. So here you can see are some more beautiful red ones. And he, these, which are in the shade, as you can see, there's the sun shining, but this only gets a little bit of light. Um, I'll move them out uh, at some stage. But that is what I do to naturalize tulips. And here you can see, this is a fantastic um, display of um, tulips in this, in the, in this uh, half wine cast beer barrel. So I'm very pleased with how the tulips are turning out this year, the ones that I potted. We had torrential rain earlier and there's jewels. Look at that, the jewels on this little Japanese maple. Anyway, I think uh, everything is looking really good, but that's how I naturalize tulips onto, uh, into the garden and other places. So there you go. What are you doing in there, pup? There's also um, marguerite daisies that grow here. There's also, um, oh, I can't think what they're called. Not Michaelmas daisies. Anyway, they're, they bloom there as well. So there you go. There's a small tour of how I naturalize tulips. As the wood anemone fades, these beautiful blue flowers that are under all our trees. The bluebells start to come out. There you can see a bluebell. But underneath all of them, or around all them, is the cow parsley. The cow parsley. And look at the celandine is underneath it all. So the snowdrops leaves are still there in under the cow parsley. You can see loads of snowdrop leaves right there. Those are all snowdrops. So they're getting their sustenance for next year. It's a beautiful sunny morning, even though it was deluging earlier. But if you go over the driveway here, the bluebells are really taking off. Look at that. They're beautiful, the bluebells. And the daffodils, it's the end of the daffodils. They're going over, as are the wood anemones. Well, this kind of a daffodil. But the bluebells are all just starting to come. And then this becomes a bell of bluebells. A bell. A bed of bluebells. And we have blue ones and mauve ones and white ones. And here you can see these are the wood anemones. Again, just going over. There's still a load of daffodils, but there's a lot less than there were. So it's a whole cycle and look, the horse chestnut is about to bloom. They're beautiful, amazing candelabras. They always look like a, a seal or a puppy dog begging the leaves before they flesh out 
They're so fresh and beautiful. But there's all the bluebells and wood anemones and daffodils and the cow parsley. I love it when the cow parsley season occurs and you have all that floof, the white floof of cow parsley. So there we go. looks like a puddle of sheep. A sheep puddle. Java, what you doing? Java, come on. What you doing? You cheeky muggins. Pouring rain. And got the gears in. Yuck. It's going to be a wet, wet, unpleasant night. And I guess lots of you are going to choose that to lamb, huh? They've had their food. But you've had a day out in the field. So, and the horses. Okay. Time to go inside. And still helping this little one nurse but she's getting a fuller belly so I think she's grabbing more than she's not grabbing in between when I'm doing it and there we go let's see no, she's still moving but her belly is much fuller and that shaking like that is a good sign, even though her back is a little humpy. Okay, and she's not as hungry because I've just finished feeding her. I thought you had enough of me. Oop, she fell. Enough of me feeding the baby for a couple of videos. 